There's only one thing that I hate more than Daniel Cormier. Daniel Cormier's commentary. It's bad. It's bad. It's really bad. It's terrible. I, I, I don't like it. I hate it. I hate him. I hate his commentary. I hate that I have to listen to him. I hate that he is on every single goddamn pay-per-view. I cannot stand Daniel Cormier. I can't stand the guy. He's awful. And look, it has nothing to do with him as a person, all right? He can be annoying at times for sure, but you know what? I can personally get past all of that. It's like, all right, so what? He's annoying. That's my personal opinion. Others may feel very differently about it. Whatever, I won't hold it against the guy. But the thing that I just can't get past, the thing that I, 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 I just cannot let this guy off the hook for is, look, for those who remember... Way back in the day, Dominic Cruz called out Daniel Cormier for how bad of a commentator he was. When it comes to DC, you know, I, I usually mute it. <laughs> I, I like I love DC. He's my friend. But to me, from my experience, he doesn't do the homework. He, he wants to get in and out, get the job done, make his money. And I think he cares about us, but it's just different. He doesn't do the preparation from my experience. He might now. I'm hoping he watches some film this time on me so that he knows what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. But I'm not going to I'm not going to hold my breath on that. They had this whole sit down, they had this whole back and forth, they had this whole confrontation. And look, Dominic Cruz, I get it. I understand he has some of his own flaws when it comes to commentating. You know, that I understand. I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of bones to pick with the guy, but all I have to say in regards to Dominic Cruz is at least he tries. At least he fucking tries. He gives it his hardest, right? He goes in there and he does his own personal best. Now, whether or not you like it or you don't like it, you know, no matter how off he is at times, at least he's doing his goddamn best. You know what Daniel Cormier does? You know how Daniel Cormier prepares for a UFC event? Well, I mean, he'll tell you right here. Is it yes, love? But what are do you, you holding do it me accountable for? Do though? you do it because you love? But what are you not holding watching me accountable film? But I, Dominic, there's different ways to prepare for a fight than watching film. It's not singular. It's not part of it. It's not singular. I do watch film. I watch film every single time. What do I watch film? Have you watched? Wow! So you didn't just so put me in the middle east. I was all initial. the problems. So I did initially. And what? So I did explain, have a explain, explain. So I had a researcher that I would pay. He would give me all my notes, and I would go and call the fights. Uh, right. But then the reality is, you. So maybe, how is that watching film? But then I would watch the fight still. But the guy would give me all the background stuff and all that. So Daniel admits that, okay, I would pay somebody to watch all the film for me. They would write me a bunch of notes, give it to me. But no, no, no I would also, st I would, I'd, so I'd pay him to do it for me, but then I would also go do it too. No, you don't. No, you don't. I, no, he, he just doesn't. I mean, I, I, based on all the examples I've collected over the years, no, he doesn't. No, no he does not. You know, I'll tell you exactly what Daniel does. He just kind of free balls it. All right, he free balls it. And the problem with free balling it is, is that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You, I mean, you, 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 you don't. The amount of things this guy says that aren't just like, oh, he was off there. It's like, no, no, you just don't know what you're talking about. Like, you, you are just filling the air with your voice for no reason because the things you're saying have no backing. And honestly, look, I agree with Dominic Cruz calling out Daniel Cormier for this. Again, I understand uh, he has his own issues as well. But, I mean, come on, man. Come on, Daniel. He makes $500,000 a year from the UFC, and this dude puts in zero effort. Zero. And trust me, we have examples. We have receipts. You see this notebook right here? This is my Daniel Cormier notebook, and inside I have every record of every terrible thing that this guy has done and and and, w and we're just gonna go through it we're gonna go through it this this video is gonna be part one of I would say 30 we're, we're just gonna go and look none of these examples I'm gonna list are in any particular order uh, some are far more egregious than others but regardless it all stems from the same place and that is that Daniel Cormier doesn't try that's the problem if he sucked but just gave it his best, I wouldn't be nearly as pissed off about it as I am right now. And before we start, though, I do want to say one nice thing. Daniel Cormier, he knows a lot about the sport of wrestling, right? He does. 
You know, I'd fucking hope so. You know, he wrestled his entire life, wrestled in the Olympics. But Daniel Cormier thinks that if you, you know, if you have the wrestling background that he does, you don't even need to learn other martial arts. You don't even need to learn the rest of MMA. Like, if you know if you know how to wrestle, it's like, well, I, I don't need to know anything about jiu-jitsu. I don't need to know anything about any other sport other than wrestling. And now, you know, in fact, no, no, that's not nice. It actually pisses me off even more. Anyway, let's get started. Do you guys remember Israel Adesanya versus Drikus Duplessis? You remember that fight? Remember how that fight happened? Well, you know, it was funny because I personally made a lot of videos breaking down a very, very clear flaw in Israel Adesanya's game. And that is, you know, Israel Adesanya is not good at finding counters. It's just not what he does. When Marvin Vittori, when Paulo Costa, when Jared Cannonier, when all of these guys would rush at him with punches... Israel Adesanya would not slip and rip with a three-punch combination like a prime Conor McGregor. No, Israel Adesanya would just simply slide away back to range where he would jab and he would leg kick. It was the exact same thing against every big, powerful hitter Adesanya fought against. He was not slipping, encountering. No, he was just sliding away from their strikes. And once he got to range, he would jab and he would leg kick. You know, I made a video talking about, frankly, his boxing isn't great. He's not an amazing counter striker. And look, my official prediction for his fight with Drikus Duplessis was, look, Drikus is going to lunge at Adesanya with big rushing shots. Adesanya is not going to counter him. He's just going to try to slide away back to range. And that is how Drikus is going to potentially win the fight against him. You know, look, if you do the film study... I mean, it's pretty clear. I mean, it's pretty clear. There's examples upon examples upon examples. But remember something. Daniel Cormier doesn't do film study. He pays for someone else to do the film study. And either this person he pays doesn't know what they're talking about or, you know, they're just fucking, he didn't read the notes like I mentioned. Because Daniel Cormier had this to say at the very start of the fight. I'm very interested to see how Duplessis attacks Edesanya. We all know that Edesanya is a tremendous counter striker. A lot of Duplessis' best work is when he is able to blitz. You gotta be careful when you blitz him because of his ability to find shots in the chaos. We all know that Israel Adesanya is a tremendous counter striker. We all know it, Daniel Cormier says. We all know. We all know he is. We all know he, he has this ability to find shots in the chaos. Are you fucking shitting me? What are you talking about? No, he, he, he just doesn't. Robert Whitaker in their very first fight was lunging at him really badly. Really, really badly, putting himself way out of range. And look, sure, if you gift Adesanya something, he'll take it. But how he just, but Daniel doesn't know. I mean, he doesn't know. I mean, he just, I, it's, it, it, it's insane to me. And you want to know the craziest part? You know who had the exact same opinion as DC? Brendan Schaub. Brendan Schaub guaranteed everybody that Israel Adesanya was going to beat Drikus because Drikus is going to lunge at him and Adesanya is too good of a counter striker. Daniel Cormier's MMA knowledge is on the same level as Brendan Schaub. I see, I see him clipping see DDP as he comes in. Bro, he looks really good, man. I mean, Daniel, you've been doing this a long time. You know, you've been a commentator for many years. You've watched a ton of fights. It's your job to explain fights to people. Dude, if you had even just watched the Marvin Vittori fight, you would have seen Marvin big, slow, lumbering at Adesanya with combinations. And not fucking once did Adesanya find a shot in the chaos. He, he just didn't do it. It just didn't happen. He spent all five rounds just sliding away from Marvin's punches, and then he would jab and leg kick him from range. That's what he does to everybody. That's what he always does. It's insane to me, and the crazy thing is he never changed his tune this entire fight, because in the first round, oh, Drikus was sure as hell blitzing at him, and you know what Adesanya wasn't doing? He was not finding shots in the chaos. He, he got tagged pretty bad round one, and at no point during this fight did Daniel Cormier go, wow, actually, no, Adesanya is not finding shots in the chaos. Maybe he's not a tremendous counter-striker like we all know, but again, 
he didn't do any film study. I mean, he doesn't know. He, he literally doesn't know. He, he has this sort of vague recollection of Adesanya, and in his vague recollection, he goes, uh, 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 a uh, counter-striker, uh, uh, a very skillful, uh, a kickboxer, uh, uh, he finds shots in the chaos very well, John Anik, and I don't think Drickus is gonna be able to blitz at him. Oh, well, Drickus blitzed at him a lot. Drickus actually finished the fight because he blitzed him and tagged him and rocked him. But, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, 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 uh, he just he finds shots in the chaos, doesn't he? Do you guys know who Dustin Poirier is? You guys know how Dustin Poirier jumps for guillotines a lot? You know that I've made an entire video before the Benoit St. Denis fight and after the Benoit St. Denis fight about how Dustin Poirier, you know, he just has some technical flaws in his guillotine and because of that, he's never been able to finish it. Right, he's never been able to do it. Well, you know what Daniel Cormier said when Dustin Poirier fought Benoit St. Denis? He said this. Oh yeah, guillotine. Dustin's got a really good guillotine. And it's early. Dustin then went out there on the Benoit St. Denis fight, jumped guillotine six separate times, and was never able to finish it. But again, uh, Daniel Cormier, you, you know, uh, guillotines are not legal in wrestling. Like, it's just not something you do in the sport of wrestling, and that's the only thing Daniel Cormier knows. It's the only thing that he wants to know about. Like, he doesn't actually put any work into learning about anything else. Like, he doesn't know the mechanics of how to finish a guillotine. He doesn't know how to, he doesn't know any of the mechanics because every single time somebody jumps guillotine, no matter what, he goes, Oh, it's tight! It's, it's tight! You know, and, and, and again... It's vague recollections. It's vague recollections. It's Daniel Cormier going, uh, okay, let's see. Dustin, he had a, he had a, he had a, uh, Habib was, was kind of rolling around in that guillotine. Therefore, he's got a really, really good guillotine that he's never finished on anybody ever. But, you know, yeah, Daniel Cormier, just go ahead and tell the world that Dustin Poirier has really good guillotines when, if, I mean, dude, there's just, you could just look up a YouTube video, how to do a guillotine. Right, and then you can learn. You can see. You can see, like, okay, what is he saying you have to do? Okay, is Dustin doing that? And he, nah, he's missing this, this, and that. And then you would know. I mean, you would just know very easily, very clearly that Dustin Poirier, I mean, it's not a terrible guillotine, but, you know, he's missing some very key components that you would need if you're going to finish a championship-level mixed martial arts fight. But, you know, Daniel Cormier doesn't know that. All right, next, let's just, uh, let's, just, let's, just, let's, just, let's just flip to a random page here. Let's just, let's just, let's just flip these around to a random page. Let's see. Oh, okay, this one, this one, this one gets me mad. You guys remember when Charles Oliveira fought Armin Sarukian? You remember that? Remember how round one of that fight, Charles Oliveira put him in an extremely tight guillotine. Armin had to roll completely to his back, giving up mount to buy himself some time. The only reason he got out was because his shorts slipped off and Oliveira's legs went with it. So he didn't have the body controlled anymore. You guys remember that? And you guys remember that if you just, like, if you just Google MMA scoring criteria, it comes up and you can read what the judges are supposed to look for and it says very, very clearly, you know, the number one criteria is effective grappling slash striking, submission attempts are 100% a part of effective grappling and therefore are a part of the number one criteria. Daniel Cormier doesn't know that. He doesn't know that. You know what he said round three? He said this. And if you're generous and you really value submissions. Oliveira got the big submission off in the first round with the top control. Armand controlled the second part of that round, so a very close round one. Yeah, very hard. Armand round, round two. Yes. This fight could potentially be go down to this round. It could. Or it could be 2 0 Armand. Armand. Yes. If you value submissions, he says. If you value it, I mean, if you personally value it, then all right. It's like, Daniel, what? what what? What? If, if you value it, do, do, do you value it? I mean, what, what do you mean? It doesn't matter what you personally value, Daniel. What matters is what the actual official criteria says. You can just Google it. He doesn't know, though. He doesn't know. Daniel does not know the judging criteria. He hasn't even bothered to look it up. He hasn't even bothered to look it up to the point that on UFC 300, arguably one of the biggest events that's ever happened, an absurd amount of eyeballs on it. This guy who gets paid an absurd amount of money to, to, to just, just try to give people some insights about the sport. This motherfucker goes, I mean, look, if you personally value submissions, I don't because there aren't any submissions in wrestling. So, you know, he's probably 2-0 armor. Like, just, just know, Daniel. 
Just know, I mean, dude, it's a fucking Google search away. How about you pay that guy who is supposed to watch these fights for you? How about you pay him to print out the criteria for you? Then you can, he can just hand it to you. You can just read it. Just fucking read it. I mean, he literally said, he goes, okay, Charles had the big submission round one, but then Armin controlled the second part of that round. So, so close round. Close round. N look, look, look at the criteria. It literally says holding the position doesn't, it doesn't count. You have to be attacking with something. It literally, what he is telling the world is the opposite of what the official criteria says. And he doesn't know. He gets paid an absurd amount of money to just not know. How does, how does somebody getting paid $500,000 a year by the UFC not even bother to Google this? How does he, it's, it's, it's fucking nonsense. And you know, whenever something like this gets brought up, the argument that I see a lot of people make is, well, I mean, the, 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 the judges don't even know their own criteria most of the time anyway, so fuck it, who, we should just all just fucking free ball it. That's stupid. That is stupid, and you know what? I can prove to you that submissions mattered in that fight because one of the judges gave round three to Charles. That fight was a split decision. You know why? Because round three, not a lot happened. Not much happened at all, except Charles put Armin in a darse. All right? So, you know, it was a split decision. One of the judges thought he won because of that. So, actually, Daniel, if you value some, no, 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 the, the submissions, they just are actually valued. All right? And you should know that. But you may be saying, well, this might just be a little one-off thing, right? Like, you know, Daniel, he, he was off there in that fight. But no, 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 This is a pattern. This is a pattern. Daniel Cormier doesn't believe submissions matter for anything. He believes that if you're laying on top of your opponent, that that is what wins you the fight. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. You know, you, you could be almost getting submitted the entire round. But no, no, as long as you were on top, you're winning because wrestling values being on top. Because when Charles Oliveira fought Islam Mahachev, Right, which that fight on its own was pretty fucking horrendous too. That fight was bad. Where am I going to talk about it though? Where am I going to talk about it? He said one thing in that fight though. He says this. And this doesn't deter Charles Oliveira. If you remember, Kevin Lee had a lot of success in round one on the ground against Dubronx. So he will make the same attacks as the fight goes on. Daniel wants to let us all know. He wants to let everybody know watching that fight that, hey, it, look, if you, you might not remember, you might not remember, I remember, I remember, and I remember that Kevin Lee had a lot of success against Charles Oliveira round one. He had a lot of success. Charles, you know, he just couldn't, he couldn't do anything, but it, he, it didn't deter him, he said. It didn't deter him. That's what he said. And, and, and specifically, what I want you to focus on is that Daniel Cormier said, he said, if you remember, he wants to let us all know that, I, you know, Daniel, he, he, he wants to just enlighten us. That's what, he wants to enlighten us. He wants to say, look, I know you guys have all forgotten. Don't worry. I remember the guy that I paid to watch fights for me. He wrote me a little paragraph about this fight. I'm reading it, and it says that Kevin Lee had a lot of success round one against Charles. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. You know, all three judges scored round one for Charles. You know why? You know why they did that? Because the second they hit the ground, which was about a minute into the you know first round, it was non-stop submission attempts. It was non-stop. Kevin Lee could not do jack shit because he kept having to defend submission attempts the entirety of round one. With 15 seconds left, Kevin landed two punches that landed. That was all of the success he had in round one, was landing two punches. Apart from that, the entire round was Kevin Lee defending submissions. But Daniel Cormier, again, he didn't watch the fight. He didn't watch the fight. I mean, are you crazy? Watch the fight? I'm supposed to actually, I'm supposed to actually watch film on the fights that I commentate? No, no, no. Someone does that for me, and then they just write, they, 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 they write to me what happens, and then I read it. And, and, and if you guys remember... Kevin Lee had a lot of success against Charles round one. No, no, actually, no. If you remember, Daniel, if you remember, you're fucking wrong. Do you guys know that Daniel Cormier wrestles? You guys know that, right? And do you know that he kind of has disdain for people who don't really have high-level wrestling? Well, you remember when Alex Pereira fought Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira hit a takedown on Adesanya, which was, you know, a shock, but... 
especially because Adesanya has really good takedown defense. Adesanya is not easy to take down, but Pereira hit a decent takedown on him. Was Picked up the single leg, started driving him back, and then he cuts the angle, turns the corner to get him off balance, takes him down. You know what Daniel Cormier said about this takedown, though? He said this. That was but weird, here's the takedown. That was a weird takedown. See, look at that. I mean, he just like he's just hanging on him so much. He's trying to take him down. That, what? Like, what are you? Like, it's just it's so so transparent how salty Daniel Cormier is. He's just hanging on him. That's what he said. He went. That was a weird takedown. And uh, Joe, jo, he's just hanging on him. What? What do you mean he's just hanging on him? What do you mean he's just hanging on him? I mean, look, it's not the most fluid takedown in the world. I mean, you wouldn't expect it to be, but the mechanics are there. Picks up the single leg, drives him back, cuts the angle. That, you know, that is how you take someone down. That's just how you do it. But he was just hanging on him. He was hanging on him. Like, like he just fucking grabbed him and just went all floppy dead weight on him and just pulled him down to the ground. Like, what? He's just hanging on him? God. Fuck! You guys remember when Sean O'Malley fought Cheeto Vera way, way back in the day? You guys remember that? Remember how when they were fighting, Cheeto attempted to kick Sean in the calf. That's what he attempted to do. Sean, you know, tried pulling back because his goal was he did not want Cheeto's shin to hit him in the calf. That's how you're really going to absorb damage. So Sean tried to pull out, and he did pull out, and Cheeto's big toe landed right perfectly on the button that turns your leg off. Sean was immediately compromised, could not walk correctly, was flopping around. He ends up getting finished. Well, Daniel Cormier and Joe Rogan both, they went on, you know, I would say probably a year-long tirade about how Sean O'Malley, you know, he, he, his his kryptonite, his calf kicks, Cheeto Vera exposed it. And, you know, Joe Rogan would say things along the lines of, you know, he damaged his calf with that kick. And look, Joe Rogan, he's just kind of gone off the deep end, right? Like, I think he's got onset dementia, Alzheimer's. That's, that's what I think is probably slowly starting to manifest in him, which is sad. But Daniel Cormier in particular, you know, he I, I, to this day, he has not watched that fight back. I mean, there's not a shot. No way. You know why? Because when Sean fought Rulian Paiva, right, which was a little after the Cheeto Vera fight, DC said this. And we got to remember, that was a big factor in the Marlon Cheeto Vera fight. And I don't understand why more people, if they're getting ready to fight Sean, don't throw those low outside calf kicks. Because of the damage Cheeto was able to inflict. Now, because they don't throw it, we don't see if Sean has really improved defensively in that area. And you want to know what's crazy about that? You want to you know what's actually wild about that? If you look at Sean's fight directly before that one, Directly before that one, it was against Thomas Almeida. Thomas Almeida attempted 28 leg kicks against Sean O'Malley. He attempted 28 leg kicks against Sean O'Malley. But you know Daniel Gorman, he's just he's so he doesn't understand. He he doesn't doesn't get it. Why aren't people kicking him in the leg more? I mean, why why not? I mean, why why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you doing it? Well, I, I you know clearly I just I, again the guy Daniel Gorman paid to watch these fights for him. He just must have left that out. He must have left that out. More likely, I think it's written in the notes. Uh, but you know Daniel glanced at it. He glanced at it. He didn't, didn't really read. You know he fucking skimmed. He skimmed. You're gonna miss some information here and there. But that, that that's that's how it goes, right? That's how it goes. That's just that's what Daniel Cormier's mo is. That's what his mo is. He skims. He hasn't watched it. He doesn't care. Remember when Islam Mahachev fought Volkanovski the second time? Daniel Cormier said this in regards to Islam's strategy for the rematch. Expect Islam to be a little more measured. I think the idea that he was going to finish Volkanovski made him start a little faster than he normally does. Volk said that he wants to get out of here quick. You want to know what's wild about that? You want to know what's fucking crazy about that as well? You know, you know, it also, it, you know, it's just, you know, you know, it's absurd. You know, it's crazy about that. Islam's first strike 
is 50 seconds in, he throws one singular keep. Apart from that, he's just moving on the outside, trying to stay very defensively sound. The next strike he throws is almost an entire minute later, he throws a single left hand. Again, so far we've had two strikes in two minutes. The rest is just him on the outside trying to move away. Then... An entire minute later, again, he finally throws his third strike of the round, hits Volkanovski with his forearm, drops him, and now he starts to overextend a little bit. He starts throwing, he starts grappling him, takes him about a minute to take him down. He takes his back with a minute left to go, then he stays there for the rest of the round. This was an extremely lax round, okay? It, it just genuinely was a very lax round. Islam Mahachev at no point overextended himself at all. At all. Like, he, he didn't. It was a very, very lax round. But, you know, Daniel Cormier, I... I it, see, that's what's crazy. Like, his own teammate, he didn't even, he didn't even bother to go back and rewatch the fight. He, he, he couldn't have. He, I mean, he couldn't have because that, that, it just didn't happen. What he is telling us didn't happen. All right, that's enough. That's enough. If I give you guys any more, I'm going to have a fucking shit ton to edit.